Okay. We are recording. We are live. ¿Y si se ve? Sí, pero I'm still in a little tiny box. But it's okay. I mean, as long as I can kind of figure out there, there's my hand. Very good. Hi. No alcanzo a ver bien los ingredientes. Can you see this? Yes, right? Yes. Um, Priscilla, hello. Um, can you just tell me, can you see Abril big? Yes. Oh, Daniela, you're on. Um, can you see Abril big, Daniela? Uh -huh, oh, I, I only see you. Oh my God. What the? Co-host. There I am. Perfect. Yeah. I still I see. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. O sea, que le... si soy bien, ¿verdad? You can see me. Yes. Ay. Thank you, Daniela. Hi. We are ready. We have a lot of work today. It's going to be a busy evening here at Abril's Cocina. <laughs> and Abril is also going to get lots of food. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And this is a, like, this week we eat a lot because we have the Super Bowl. We have my two classes. We have Valentine's then. Oh my goodness, a lot of food. Have you tried Toritos before? No, but I'm excited no. to see what you're gonna make with them. This is a Baja style dish from my homeland. Oh. And yeah, it's very good. I personally love them. I can eat them all day. Toritos. And you know what I like? That you can bite into these chiles and it's not too spicy, that you can eat a, a bunch of them and it's okay? I don't know. <laughs> well, let me tell you, my mom will bite into an habanero, like nothing. That's, that's the way I grew up. Like my mom eating habaneros, like whatever, like with her huevitos estrellados in the morning, like she will go and uh, bite an habanero. My dad used to say, whoever eats this chile, I'll give them $5. And yeah. we go back then, $5. And y ahí estábamos enchiladas, but then we would gulp a whole gallon of milk. Yeah, but that's so interesting to me, like how we Mexicans grew, like we literally grow up eating spice food, like spicy. It's like everywhere in all our food and it's part of our, of our culture which to me is very interesting. That's why I have my salsa business. I think it's like the best way to describe a Mexican is through el picante. Yes. We'll give it, it's barely 5.59. We'll give it about two more minutes. Okay. Yeah, because we've got work to do, ladies. Today is a busy, busy day. Okay, let me just double check all the ingredients here. Oh, let me get the ice. Lots of ingredients as well today. I love this term, the home gators, home gating. <laughs> That's what we have to do now. We home It gate. is what it is. That's for sure. Well, this ice got stuck in the plate. So, I guess it's six o'clock. So, um, Hi, my name is Teresa and I work for Northgate Markets and today I will be Abril's co-host. Um, 
and I welcome you all to uh, Abril's Kitchen. Today we are going to be making some chiles güeritos, some empanadas, and a Jamaica pecan, uh, spiced up with mezcal. And these are all some awesome stuff you could guys could make for your home gating on at Super Bowl. Um, this is a third of our Super Bowl classes and we're very excited. Um, just so you know, um, Abril can't see you guys, uh, but I will be her co-host. So if you have any questions during the class, put them in the chat and I'll relay them to Abril. And Abril, let's get started because I heard you have a lot of food we want to make today. Yes, let's get this party started, guys. Hello, my name is Abril Chavarria. Welcome all to my kitchen. So first of all, what we're gonna do is kind of go through all the ingredients to make sure that we have everything we need for three recipes we're getting today. So today is the third class and we're doing three different uh, meals. So first of all, for our mezcalita de Jamaica, we are going to need some piloncillo. I got the small piloncillo, but this equals like to a big bar. Uh, a cinnamon stick, a bunch of uh, hib hibiscus flour or Jamaica, e anise, star anise. This is my extra touch because I like it like kind of spicy in the sense of like um, spices, not spicy hot. But speaking of spicy hot, we are going to need some chili powder and chamois for the rim. Also, you guys are gonna need a big cup of Jamaica water from Norgate. I have mine here already. And what else? Some ice and a shaker and, um, and the mezcal. That's for the mezcalita. Also for the stuffed peppers, we need some huerito peppers, which are these ones. If you don't know them, I present them to you, huerito peppers. They're, these are very, very delicious. And we're gonna stuff them with the shrimp. So, oh, I forgot to get my shrimp, sorry. Let me get my shrimp. So here are um, about 12 jumbo shrimp. And we're gonna need these two. We need some lime juice. We need some um, soy sauce. We need some jugo maggi because this recipe is Mexican and you know we Mexicans love this stuff. Uh, also we need salt, pepper and um, garlic powder. We are going to be using uh, from six to eight cups of oil, cooking oil, the vegetable one. And for our empanadas, we need some pre-made Norgate masa for tortillas. Um, and also I got from Norgate some chicharrón and salsa verde, some tinga de pollo, and some uh, birria, the res. So this is gonna be the easiest recipe because basically we're just gonna stuff those empanadas and fry them in the oil. Uh, it is important for you to know that we're gonna use the same cooking oil for both recipes. So we don't, um, you know, we can use and recycle this oil. Okay, so where do we start? I suggest we start with the mezcalita so then we can get like in the mood for cooking, right? So I'm gonna start my uh, stove and I'm gonna start both of them right now because this takes a longer time to heat up. So this is the oil and it's gonna start cooking, like, like heating. And also you need a smaller pan for mezcalita. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our uh, water, Jamaica water, and we are gonna pour it here. And we this is agua que you made before with agua de agua. With is this Jamaica water or, or yeah, what is agua it? fresca? I bought it at Norgate. Oh, they sell it in Norgate. They so have you're hacking. Types. Yeah, so then I, I hacked it exactly <laughs> because this is already has a little bit of sweet, and so you it's better if you do it that way because we are going to do a syrup from these ingredients and also the agua fresca that I already purchased. So we are going to bring in all the rest of the ingredients here. 
which is the cinnamon stick, the piloncillo, and the bunch of um, Jamaica flour, and my star anise, just because I love it. I love star anise. I put that in everything. And we're just going to leave it there to boil, OK? What we want is for the Jamaica to release all its flavor and its like um, texture and everything, and also for the piloncillo to melt. So why we are doing that, we are going to start by peeling and cutting appropriately these little fellas over here. So for that, we need a knife like this one, uh, like a short knife with a nice tip. And I'm gonna teach you how to cut into these bad boys the right way. So you are going to find the side that has like a little curve and we're gonna make an incision. There you go. Just right in the middle, a tiny incision. And so, and then we pop it open like this. See? Now, if you guys want, you can use a spoon to remove the seeds. I personally don't do it just because it, it's no, it's no need. You're not going to eat until this part. You know what I mean? Like I just leave them there, but that's up to you. If you want, you can kind of like scrap the seeds around and just like remove them like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep doing these to our chiles. Oh, let's ask them, Teresa. Is anyone cooking with us today? Raise yes, your hand. Yes, is any, it, it, can you raise your hand if you're cooking along? Oh, Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. And Edna. Ooh. Oh, this is going to be exciting. I can't yeah. wait to see what, what their okay, finished guys. product is. So, what we're going to do is if you have any questions of the process or if you need me to go a step back, or do something, anything at all, you can type it in and Teresa is going to handle the questions. So look at this, Teresa. We just do that and then we pop it open. Yes. And there you go. So in this space is where the stuffing is going to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cook a few because um, I don't know how many you guys got, but uh, just to get give you the right idea on how to cook them and then you can go on from there. Just so, so we have enough time to go through the three recipes we have today. There. And you know, what I like about these peppers is that they're not too, too spicy. So you can, really bite into them and you'll be fine unless you really don't eat spicy food in that case oh but if you eat jalapenos this will be fine so this is a kind of like a what we're gonna call it yeah and we call them toritos in mexico there we go so this is what we're looking for. Like this is the perfect way to open one. Oh, this one doesn't, it's giving me a hard time. So there you go, see? So beautiful. Okay. Okay. There. So I got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to make nine. I also, um, in part of the ingredients for this recipe, calls for some chives or you can uh, use the red uh, onion. I personally like it with this one and one lemon, the juice of one lemon. But for now, we're gonna put this back here. And what we're gonna do next 
is uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut our shrimp. So what do we want from this shrimp? We wanna cut it in little pieces. I'm gonna use a knife that has like a saw in it so it's easier to cut. Okay, and just go ahead and chop it. I'm gonna move there a little. Like that, there you go. Just little pieces. Remember, this is gonna shrink a little bit when it cooks. So it's okay, yeah, you have you just pieces like this. That's good enough. And usually what I calculate is that it takes us like one shrimp per um, chile, but you wanna bring in a little bit more of shrimp just in case you can stuff more in there. So let's say for um, nine or 10 chiles, let's use like 12 or 13 shrimp. And this is the shrimp that they sell that's already uh, deveined and, yes. and peeled. It's peeled, deveined, and you want to buy these. They have like different types in Norgate. They have ones with the shells. They have ones um, like this one peeled. And I like it because it's jumbo and it's already clean. So it saves you a lot of time, which is nice. Okay. I'm so excited that people are cooking with us, Teresa, today. Yes, me too. It's always fun. Okay. Have you ever tried Toritos um, de Camarón? No, I've tried them with um, cheese and with chorizo, but not de Camarón. Yeah. This is a recipe from my home state of Baja. Well, they, there's a dispute between Baja and Sonora. No, sorry, Sinaloa. They're always fighting over who invented it. <laughs> but, um, well, the first time I tried them is in Baja, so I'm going to say it's a recipe from Baja. Okay. Okay, so my water is starting to bubble. And um, today I'm gonna make this mezcalita with tequila because somebody finished my mezcal. <laughs> I don't know who, <laughs> I don't know where it went, <laughs> but it's the same. Basically a, a mezcalita is a margarita made out of mezcal. So it can be called a mezcalita or a margarita. The margarita is usually with tequila. So that's the difference there. Oh, yeah. learn something new. <laughs> okay. So do we have any questions so far, Teresa? Nothing yet. They're all very attentively looking at you. Yeah. Quickly. Well, this recipe is so much fun. And it's so easy to achieve. And basically, it makes your water, your mouth water because it's very delicious. Okay, so I'm all through my last shrimp. There you go. Okay, so now we're gonna get to season it. And we wanna make sure it has enough salt because uh, we're gonna fry these. So sometimes the salt uh, gets like diluted from the mixture. So I'm gonna add enough. This equals a half a teaspoon, a tablespoon, sorry. So I'm going to use one tablespoon and then some pepper. Also, let's do one. And also the garlic powder. And you know what, just in case, I'm going to add a little bit more of salt. I know it looks a lot, but it's um, a lot is going to be lost in the process. So. 
Now we mix it. You can use your hands. You can use a spoon. And next, we stuff these babies. So basically, you just add a little bunch and you push in until it's basically full, like really, really filled in. See? And don't worry, these won't fall because of the shape it will get. And you know, um, shrimp is very moldable has plasticity <laughs> and so it will it will stay there you don't need to like close it with a toothpick or anything interesting i know okay And I always suggest to buy more um, shrimp just in case you're, because we, we never know how big the chiles are gonna be. Sometimes they're super big, sometimes they're tiny. So it's good to have enough um, shrimp in case you run out. Like, look, this big boy here has a lot of chili, uh, shrimp in it. Okay. So Teresa, this year is Norgate's 40th anniversary. I got actually, all my gear. Yeah, actually we're we're getting to we're at 41 because our oh. last year was our big 40 and we kind of got um, robbed. So we're oh. still celebrating. Uh, she likes chile rellenos with shrimp. Oh, that's another recipe that probably I can make in another class, Teresa. Like, like regular chile rellenos, but with shrimp. Uh, yes, I think for the, we have some awesome Lent classes. Yeah. I, I think you're teaching us in one class how to make albondigas de salmón. Yes. That's one of my Lent classes. So the, the first time I tried chile rellenos de camarón was in La Esperanza. No, no, sorry. El Rosario, Baja California. And it's a small town. People go eat, um, you know, the big races, the Baja Mil races, all the way down oh, to Los Oh, never Paso. been. Well, it's very, very, um, a lot of people know about that. Like, it's like trails and it's like a route, like a route and people know it and visit it and out from all over the world. And this little place called um, Mama Espinosa has the best chiles rellenos mm -hmm. de camarón. I heard you recently went to uh, Chiapas, right? Oh, yes. My gosh, that was an exciting, exciting trip. So beautiful. Look, guys, I have a good eye because my shrimp is exactly, exactly what I needed. The cooking eye, my mom says. You have the cooking eye. There you go. Okay. So once you guys are done, and look, my mezcalita is almost ready. My um, syrup. So, Somebody typed that they usually add mozzarella with the shrimp and then she sometimes wraps them in bacon. Oh yeah, that's like a more, um, this, one, this recipe is uh, a little bit more on the Pacific side and the cheese and the bacon is more of the, in the other side. <laughs> yeah, that it's usually like, that's how you will do also the, the jalapeno poppers, right? with shrimp yeah. and cheese and this you're gonna you're gonna try a different thing here because of the sauce that we're gonna make 
You're, you'll see. I think you're going to like it. Okay. So we're done right now here. And now let me raise my hand. Okay, perfect. So I think we're gonna take a break here because my oil isn't hot enough, but my drink, it's almost ready. I think it's, it's ready now. So how is your guys looking? Is it bubbly already? Mm. Yeah, I bet you that smells delicious. <laughs> it's cool because it is a sweet drink, even though um, it has some spicy to it. It's still like the base is not spicy, it's sweet. And it has like cinnamon and another, some other flavors that makes it como un contraste. It's nice. Okay, so I'm going to go and um, I'm going to drain these into this uh, plate. gonna be there you go so um evelyn wants to know six cups of oil for the shrimp right at least yeah you know i have more here usually what i do is that i fill the the pot to the half but at least six cups because you want these guys to be floating in there. Okay, so who's ready for a mezcalita? Mm -mm. So what we first wanna do here, and ideally you wanna wait for this to cool down, but right now we don't have that much time, so we're gonna just do it like that. And first I need some chamois, so I'm gonna use a plate. If you have like those reamers, that will be nice too, but if you don't, it, with a plate, it's enough. And I like like a lot, I like a whole deal of chamois in my ring. So I just dip it and dip it again. <laughs> and then dip it again and again and again. See? And this is a nice chamoy, like not the liquid one won't stay, but this thick one will stay in your cup. So that's nice. No, I want more. There you go. Do you like margaritas, Tere? Yes, I love anything that has tequila in it. Oh, yay. Okay, and then we're going to use another plate for the salt. And, you know, I love this. This, to me, is perfection because all the chamois is going to come down. Oh, and another tip, guys. So, usually, this is sal de gusano con chile y chapulín, by the way. I got this oh, at Oaxaca. Yeah, but with margaritas and mezcalitas i personally love this so okay what is it it's like it's sal de okay de gusano de maguey and chapulín and chile <laughs> so if we translate that ladies uh okay. it doesn't sound as good as in english that in spanish so it will be a uh, chili salt with maguey worms and grasshoppers <laughs> <laughs> I got it um, in one of my trips to Oaxaca. I got a lot of it because I really liked it. Okay, a tip, guys. So this mix, this mix here, you remove the cinnamon and the star anise and you can blend it with the leaves. And then that makes a syrup like thicker and with more flavor. Right now we're not gonna do it, but if you wanna try it, you can totally do that. And I think you're gonna like it even more. 
Okay. So if we don't have that wonderful secret powder, we could use regular tahin, right? Yeah, yeah, tahin <laughs> powder, whatever. <laughs> I know, right? Um, tahin is what we usually eat. Okay, so I'm gonna put here about a cup of ice. I'm gonna add a cup. You can do, you use like um, two thirds. But because my uh, syrup is kind of hot, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay. Then we add, let's say one third of a cup of our syrup. Oh, let's do this. There. And the special ingredient. I will add two ounces just because my cup is too big. Okay. Don't judge me. <laughs> it's a big cup. But if you're doing like smaller, with one would be enough. Okay. And now we shake. You want to shake it until your shaker is super cold. There we go. Yummy. I think I needed more here. It's a big cup, guys. Looks delicious. Yeah. Oh. Um, so good. How did yours turn? Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. Are we ready? What about Let's you guys once they are cooking? Are you guys ready? Mm, cheers, Teresa. Cheers. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. You're making my mouth water. <laughs> and so if you guys want to add more sugar, more piloncillo, you know, it's up to you. I gave you like a mild recipe just because I don't know if you like it super sweet. I don't personally like it super sweet. But it helps that the Jamaica, it's already had some, some uh, sugar in it, plus the piloncillo, I think it's, it's good. Okay, so let's move on. So for these uh, special peppers, toritos, we're gonna do a special sauce. The idea is when they're done, we can dip them in the sauce, okay? So first of all, we need a half cup of um, soy sauce. And this is called uh, salsa negra. Have you heard of salsa negra before? They use it yes. for like... Um, mariscos, seafood. no? Uh -huh, mariscos. And it comes from Sinaloa. And it's very easy to, to make. We add two of these and then we have a quarter of a cup of Maggi. I love salsa negra. I especially love it. I even tried it with sushi. So good. And uh, so for this salsa, we're not going to add uh, any spice just because this has already some spice and we don't want to make it too spicy that we don't, we cannot eat it. Next, we need a the juice of a lemon or a lime. It's almost a half a cup. You can add more if you like it. 
We don't add salt because both of these um, soy sauce and Maggi sauce are very salty. So we don't need to add any more salt. And then we add our green. Edna, so I have Edna's oil is ready and she's asking if she should put her peppers in. Yes, if your oil is ready, let's try mine. You can start dumping those here. Mine is not done yet. Well, it's hard, like it's getting there, but yeah, you can, you'll go ahead and start. Well, we finished this. Okay, so you can choose between your green um, onions or the red one. I'm gonna go with the red one. And I'm gonna slice it very thin, but I'll teach you how to slice the, the green one if you choose the green one. And I personally like them in diagonals, like this. Oh, my board got all shrimpy. Oh, can you hear that? Woo! Yes! Um, how long? Yeah. So, how long do they fry the peppers for? I'm gonna say about one to two minutes. I'll show you how they need to be brown and very crispy. I'll show you. Since my my oil is not um, heating as fast as yours, guys. Um, look, this is what how I like. The green, um, the green uh, onions to be, and if you choose this one, we're gonna go for thin slices. Okay, look. Let me show you. So this has been here for about a minute, right? But my oil is not um, hot enough so it's not cooking as well yet it's getting there but it needs a little bit more time if yours is already like golden brown then it's time to uh, bring them out and you can place them in a um, line and pepper towel line uh, dish i'm gonna start throwing and the good thing about using a pot is that you can throw a bunch in there and it will be fine have you ever done them in an air fryer, Ebony? No, that's an interesting question. I wonder how will they come out? Mm, it's already smelling like shrimp. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, I have a tip for you. When you are going to fry a lot of stuff and like, let's say fish tacos or these, and you want the oil to stay golden and pretty, just add a little bit of a piece of aluminum foil and that will do it. Wow, that is a tip. Yeah, so helpful, right? Because you mm -hmm. know then the, the oil gets brown and not nice, like, I mean black. Okay, so there you go, guys, look. This is what we're going for. And now I'm super curious about the air fryer, Teresa. They want you to repeat the foil tip. What's that? They want oh, you the to tip? repeat the foil tip. Okay, so when you are cooking with a lot of oil and you're gonna do a lot of batches of uh, food, like this one or fish tacos or whatever it is that you're cooking with a pot of oil, you can add a little piece of uh, folded foil into the oil so it doesn't go brown or black, doesn't burn. That will help you not to, the oil not to burn. So 
So next time that you go to a fish taco stand, you you know how they have these big, huge, um, uh, like fryers mm -hmm. filled with um, oil. Pay attention; they have like foil on the sides or inside, like wow. with the fish tacos. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. That's a very handy tip. Wow, this is looking so good. Oh, and it smells good too. Okay, so let's continue with the onion. And I'm gonna slice the onion in thin, very thin, thin, slices and we're going to use this to garnish at the very end okay so something like that i think these are kind of thick i will do it um thinner if you can but right now i don't even have a board <laughs> i'm boardless okay let's see Mm -mm. So make sure you turn them around because they float on one side where they're heavier and sometimes you, you need to give them a little push in. Ooh. Very good. So what part of Baja are you from, Abri? I'm from Ensenada. The prettiest part. <laughs> No, no, just kidding. Every part of Baca is so beautiful. I'm in love with my state, but I'm from Ensenada. So over there in Ensenada, everyone knows how to cook, Teresa. It's just so amazing. Mariscos El Güero, yeah! <laughs> Mariscos El Güero are my personal favorite. My husband, by the way, he, he likes La Guerrerense, which is like- A block country. away. <laughs> But I am all about Mariscos El Güero. <laughs> Should we turn um, the heat down on the oil after we take out the peppers or keep it ready for the empanada? Yeah, you can turn it. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that just because this won't help me. But you can turn it off. And then when we start with our empanadas, we're going to use it again. So yeah, maybe just turn it a little bit down so it doesn't like sprinkle or anything. These ones are taking the longest time to cook. So I guess our friends already are, are already done with them, huh, Teresa? Yeah. Let's move forward. Okay, so guys, we have our chiles here. Maybe yours are already out. We have our sauce. We're gonna save this for later. Because now it's time for our empanadas. And so these are salt, um, our corn empanadas. I don't know if you ever have them before, but you can totally um, make empanadas with uh, corn masa. Some of them call them gorditas or quesadillas, but it's basically what we're gonna do today is an empanada. So for convenience purposes, I got my masa pre-made already from Norgate. I still gonna, la voy a amasar poquito. How would you say amasar in English? Knead, I believe. You're yeah. gonna knead it. Uh, we're gonna do it a little bit just to get, get it like all even up. We can add a little bit more of flour. This one is regular flour. I like to do this with regular flour. 
Plus, you want like that consistency from regular flour, like all purpose flour, just a little bit also in the, in your board or your counter. What am I doing this? Because sometimes it will, the, the masa will stick on our uh, plastic bag and we don't want that to happen. So we're just like picking it up a little, little bit. Okay. So we want it to be sticky, but not that sticky. So just a little bit more. Look at me, I'm multitasking right now. <laughs> Estoy con un ojo al gato y el otro al garabato. <laughs> <laughs> a mom's job. A mom's like a regular Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now I think we're done. We're gonna do little bolitas, little balls about this size. I mean, if you want them bigger, it can be, they can be bigger. I like them this size, like an average bolita of masa. Oh, mine's are already, and they're almost done. So exciting. Fabril, are you, who are you rooting for? The Chiefs oh, or the Buccaneers? You know, I'm rooting from, for Tom Brady, just because my husband told me the whole story because I'm not like a huge fan, but I'm like, oh yeah, boy, go and get it. I think that they, he got kicked out from his team, right? Because he was too old. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a football fan, but I know it's the old against the young. Yeah, but he is killing it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, boy, like, of course. Yeah, go show them. So I'm like, oh, about that guy right now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, 40s pride. <laughs> I'm turning 40 this year, Teresa. Oh, you look beautiful and young, Adri. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, so I think he's with the, I don't even know what's the team he's playing. I know he was with the Patriots before. No, oh yeah, the the Patriots, right? But now he's with another, the, the Buffaloes or something? I think it's, a ver, ayúdenos. It's, uh, it is the hell. Buccaneers, right? Did I get it wrong? <laughs> yes. They said, oh, yeah, the, the Buccaneers. Buccaneers? Oh, the Buccaneers? Okay. I know the other guys with the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Is the other is. Yeah. Well, I I don't know anything. I do yeah. know when Mexico plays, that's when I get excited. Ask me about soccer, baseball, soccer. I'll tell you. Ask me about soccer, I'll tell you. Yeah, look, yeah, exactly. somebody me put too. Buccaneers and Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, perfect. We learned something today. Okay. But we're still going to watch the game, right? And you're cooking. Every day we learn something. Okay, let's bring out these babies. I don't want them to burn. And yeah, I'm going to... No, you know what? I'm not going to do that because we're almost... Okay, so there you go. Brown and beautiful. Yeah, Pat's giving us a lesson. She's saying that it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they're playing in their stadium. Oh, really? The, the, the team where Tom Brady's playing? Yes. Nice. I bet the other guys from the other team he used to play, they're like bumping their heads into the walls, right? Like we let him go. He's the one that's winning the Super Bowls. Okay. Very good, guys. So we are halfway there. You know what I'm do? I do. I'm gonna lower it a little bit. So let's move forward. But first, a little zippy. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So for practical purposes, I'm going to use one of these. 
If you don't have one of these, it's okay. You can use a plate. Or Teresa the other day gave me a great idea to use a bottle, a wine bottle. So that's nice. And so here comes the tricky part, guys, because We want to uh, squeeze it, but not too thin, but also not too um, thick. So it's, it has to be like a right amount of shape that I'm gonna show you. And don't you worry, the first one always comes out back, just like pancakes. I don't know why. It's like the laws of physics or something of cooking. <laughs> So I turn it around to do the other side. A little bit, not too much. And this is what we're looking for. And sometimes it, the, the, the masa will get stick, so you stuck, so you kind of need to peel it very, very carefully, okay? Like. Nice job, Abri. There. Okay, so let's choose one. Let's do first. I'm gonna do one of chicharron. And guys, this is an awesome uh, recipe because you get to use a lot of different ingredients, but you don't have to make all the ingredients. Yes. Or sometimes you have leftovers in your fridge and you don't know what to do with them. And this is an awesome way to, uh, to use it. So, you know, like when you're having guests, like right now it doesn't apply so much. I think I put, too much, but that's the idea. I got carried away. But yeah, use just a, a few spoons. But like I was saying, we sometimes have guests and you don't want to complicate things, but you still want to make a good impression. So this is the perfect thing to do. You just get all the ingredients at Norgate and then there you go. And it looks like you did something more than what you really did. Okay, and then you can fold them as you like. Some people like just fold them like this. Today, what we're gonna do is use, we're gonna use a fork to kind of mark it. And oh no, look, it broke. That's because if you stuff it too much, they can break. So just add one, one spoon. Look, mine broke because I got super excited about the chicharron, but let's see, let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, let's try for the other one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use less uh, stuffing. So, Pat wanted to tell us to say that she's, I guess she's rooting for the Chiefs and she said that Mahomes is Tejano. So she's happy about that. Oh, who's Tejano? The quarterback wait. on the Chiefs. Oh, oh, wait a second. That guy's also big news because he has like a great record, right? Uh, my husband's the one that fills me up with all these um, information, but he told me that he was the youngest um quarterback. quarterback of the nfl ever is that right to win yeah they won last year oh to win wow yes and are you and from he's, texas he's from nice. tyler texas so pat are you from texas we have a couple of tejanas on uh, today oh i love it i love norgate multicultural well, see? She's from Chuco Town. Chuco Town. Nice. Okay. I told our I told our real estate department we're gonna have to start looking for stores in Texas. We've been getting a couple yes. of Tejanas on our on our in our it's classes. Time, it's time to branch out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I know we're, we're uh, oh, El Paso, Texas. I know my uh, sister-in-law's in the class and she's probably saying, yes, Houston. 
Mmm, Teresa, this thing looks so young. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mm. Okay, sorry. One tip, guys. Don't put a lot of broth in your in your um, empanada because the masa is gonna start getting weird. Chuck down is el paso. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just adding some chicken here. I think that's enough. I don't want just about a big spoon, like a spoon this size. And then we fold it. There. Oh, I saw these kids. I'm listening to this song um, that they bring back a song from Ricardo Montaner. Have you seen that? It's like a boy band, but Latino. I don't even know the name of these kids, but the song is just right now playing on my radio. Kat says she's making some for Sunday because she's gonna she's gonna root for her cowboy. So she's gonna make her empanada. Oh, nice. I love it. Look, this one turned out very pretty. Look at this. That's what we're looking for. So yeah, the secret is not a lot of caldito and also uh, just one spoon of stuffing. Okay, so let me put this in high. There you go. Perfect. Then we're gonna try one with, and this is my personal favorite. I'm saving the best for last because Norgay carries the best barbacoa and birria that I've ever, ever tried. This time I think I got, oh my gosh. They said if you could make them out of cheese too. Yeah. So I will make them out of cheese with razas, cheese with elote, what else? You can do Oaxaca cheese, you can do uh, ch uh, cheddar, whatever you want, but I will do Oaxaca cheese and rajas. <gasps> you can also get some epazote from, this, from Norgate. You buy fresh epazote, Oaxaca cheese, and a little bit of corn maybe, and ooh. Oh, You're making my mouth water. <laughs> You're making my mouth water. Yeah. I need that in my life. Epazote is the best. So this last what is, I to, what is epazote? Epazote is a Mexican herb that we use to cook uh, basically everything, but it's big in Oaxaca. They eat it a lot with quesillo, which is queso Oaxaca. We know it as queso Oaxaca here, but they call it quesillo over there. And they just put a bunch of epazote and then the, the queso Oaxaca and with like a, in a tlayuda or in one of these empanadas and oh my gosh it just like the flavors just pop out it's very good that's from oaxaca but i went to chiapas over the the break on um christmas winter break and they have something they're called chipilin which is another herb kind of like a spinach and they do the same but with chipilin yeah, it's like a rula for, for us Mexicans. I don't know if you're talking about a pasote or chipilin, but both are delicious. And yeah, it's like an arugula. And chipilin, Teresa, is so good. I'm looking. So if Norgit ever carries it, please let me know. And I can make I will ask. Pasote. Yeah. Let's do something with chipilin. It's so yummy. Okay. So we're going to do the, the birria one now. I'm still going to try to find where you got that other, the rim for your Jamaica. Oh, <laughs> yes. Just ask for sal de chapulín or sal de gusano. They all come with, um, with chile already. It's like a tajín, but with the, with the worms. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh, no, it wants to break. Mmm, this is going to be my favorite. Oh, somebody said we chole with, let's see, we chole con queso? We choles. 
Huita, huitachón. Ah, huitacoche. Uh -huh. Huitacoche. Mm. Yes. Now he knows or she knows what she's talking about. And you know what? I've seen can with la coche in Norgate. I've never tried it though, but I think it's worth a try. It comes like in a jar, which is weird. I've never seen it like that, but yeah. So with la coche, Teresa is, um, you know when the corn, it's like a corn fungus. Yeah. It's yes, like it's it's supposed to be really good. It's like a mushroom, no? Yeah, it's like um corn in the decomposing process and it's black, but it's very, very good. Black corn fungus, there you go. And yes, I'm all for with la coche. Now you're giving me ideas, girl. I'm gonna go get some and I'm I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna post it in on my Instagram and let you guys know if it's good. Okay. And your Instagram is Abril Taste uh, of Mexico. Abril Taste of Mexico in, uh, yeah, in Instagram. Abril slash Taste of Mexico. And I'll put that. Okay, guys, we're doing the last one here. Okay. Oh my gosh. And these are like soft, even though you like, well, fry them basically, but they come out very soft. So now while these ones cook, what I'm going to show you guys, guys is how to present your chilitos gueritos. So I'm going to move this over here. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at us. Busy day. Yes, and in one hour you made all this food. It's all amazing. This food. And it's perfect for um, the Super Bowl. These are like bite snacks, they call them, right? Okay, so I always use a, a white um, dish just because it, you, you'll see it's going to pop up. There you go. What I like to do is just to kind of place them nicely around the plate. And this, this looks so nice. Like you can even show up to any reunion, whatever COVID's out of the picture, but they're very easy to prepare and everyone loves them. We bring our caldito and we just drizzle a little bit here, a little bit there. Place this in the center for dippers. And then we just garnish like here and there. That's a meal. Yeah. My husband, I can fit him this all, all year round. <laughs> and you know, like, since I did only nine, but ideally, whenever you do more, this looks even prettier because it's like full, like filled with all the peppers. But basically, this is the idea. And there you go. Awesome. Now, if you chose the chives, let's do chives in here. You can also do the green onions like this. That looks delicious. 
And so you just go, you dip it in. Been eating all day, Teresa. <laughs> mm. I told them I have the worst job. I get to see all of you guys cook and smell, mm. and I don't get to taste. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh my God. This is just from, and then you sip a little bit of your mezcalita. Mm. Yes. Yeah, baby. Wow. Mm-hmm. 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 Perfect. Okay. Let's see these ones before we go. Mm. Nombre Teresa, ¿qué andamos haciendo? Look at this. And I just want to show my friends before we go how these turn out. But it's basically the same. These ones, you need to let them like, oh yeah, I think you're gonna like them a lot. And then there you go. Ah, it's burning. <laughs> <laughs> They're still super hot, <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah, you need to let them um, cool off a little bit more. But you see, the, la masa, the masa is not as thick. It's not like chunky that you're going to be biting into a lot of masa and no filling. That's why we want to be very careful and make them um, thinner than usual, but not to stuff them too much, because if we do, then we ruin the masa. That looks there you go. Delicious. Yeah. Thank you so much, Avril. Um, it was an awesome class. Um, and everybody next, uh, so Saturday we have a kids uh, cookie class, um, everything cookies um, and chocolate abuelita. And then next nice. week, um, come and join Avril. She's going to teach us how to make birria in the Instapot. And uh, and we're very excited about that. And it's and, and we're a gonna make chamorro birria in an instant pot, and then we're gonna make flan, coconut flan, to give it like a nice, delicious twist. Um, any questions before we leave? Corona crema, uh, is a class registration on site? Yes, the class is on site. The recording to this class will be emailed, but it's I know that all our classes are on our website. And also um, on February 11th, then we have Chef Isabella, who's gonna teach us how to make a Valentine's shrimp and steak, garlic potatoes, um, awesome dinner too. So um, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for joining and thank you everybody for, uh, joining us today and Abril, thank you for another amazing recipe. Thank you guys. It was my pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Go Cowboys. <laughs> Go Chargers. I know that. <laughs> She's a San Diego fan. Um, and we are teamless. Mom joined today, Abril. Eh? Mi mamá también joined today, so she's on the really? call. Yeah, so. Hi, Teresa's mom. <laughs> and so uh, thank you for joining and see you next week, Abril. Bye, guys. See you next week. Hola. <laughs>